Welcome to the Mike Dolce Knows channel. Today, baby. Ooh, this is a good one. We've changed the program. All right, let, let's let's start over here. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike Dolce Knows channel. Today, I got a great video for you. I am changing my strength training program, and I want to share it with you. Whoa, Dolce, you've been talking about that push pull leg system for like a year or more now didn't you recently say that the push pull system is like the best overall training program that there is yes i did say that it's weird when i say dolce because it's like that's what everybody calls me but when i say it it's like i'm talking to myself and i'm not that guy but for illustration purposes only. I have been following the push-pull leg system for the better part of two years now, and I've been making dramatic progress. What is the push-pull legs? We train the pushing muscles up of the upper body. We train the pulling muscles of the upper, upper body, and then we train the legs, the lower body. Concurrently, push-pull legs, push-pull legs, push-pull legs, and we take a day off when needed. Some people will follow push-pull legs off, push-pull legs off, fine. Others, push, pull legs, push, pull legs off. Others, push, pull off, legs off, push, pull off. So many different ways to run the push, pull leg system. Personally, I've been running push, pull legs, push, pull legs until I needed a day off and I have a little bit more training experience than the average person being really good at moderating volume intensity overlaid with rest, recovery, and nutrition. Well, I've been following since January 1st. You understand that if you follow the channel, I've been following my own full body recomposition program, trying to gain muscle tissue while lowering total body fat. And it has gone incredibly well, incredibly well in that I have added two pounds to when I started. I'm actually 214 pounds right now when I speak to you. And I've lost a dramatic amount of body fat in that period of time, all January, all February, all March. The last three months have been dedicated to my body recomposition program. Those of you who follow our Instagram, you know that I've been live tweeting during my cardio sessions. Um, I'll do more of that here now that we've been approved you know, for this channel where I can start doing live training here with you guys. Tomorrow morning, I'll actually do the, the live cardio talk. If I can swing and I'll do that with you, but I digress. Point is I started month one, January, the four by four, just cleaning things up, getting more consistent. I went on to the living lean program in February, which I've continued that all the way through tomorrow, April 1st, I will start day one of our three weeks to shredded program. As I now make the push to get summer shredded ultimate summer lean. I'm going to run two rounds of three weeks to shredded back to back. That's going to be 42 straight days of the three weeks to shredded program. If you're curious about the three weeks to shredded program, I will be following. You can click the link below, set up your own program and follow it along with me to get in your very best shape. And I'm going to be fully transparent, tell you everything I'm doing the entire time. Now I will be running my own version of the push pull leg system that I've been running since January 1st. And I will say every single workout since January 1st, I've gotten stronger. I've added more reps. I've added more weight. I've cut down rest time. I have crushed it. So you might say, why then Dolce, are you going to change this? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, dude. What are you doing? Well, let me explain to you. This is like total humble brag, but you'll understand I've gotten so strong over the last three months that the weights I am using are very taxing on my ability to recover. I'm, I'm moving a lot of weight. I mean, like depends on the, the specific workout that I'm doing. Let's, let's, let me, let me back up here for day one, my push day. I have to train my chest. I have to train my shoulders. I have to train my triceps. And I do a little bit of shoulder mobility and rehab work, face pulls and, and, and TYIs and things such as that. On my back day, I have to train my entire upper back, my mid back, my trap and my erectors while also hitting my biceps and forearms. My leg day, I have to train my quads. I have to train my hamstrings. I have to train my glutes. I have to train my calves and I have to train my core. This has gotten to the point that it is a lot of work. It's a lot of weight. It's becoming a lot of exercises. 
And what I've decided to do is I've decided to spread this out. It's still the exact same formula. Now, let me explain this to you. Those of you who waited this deep into the video, well, here is the money shot. Boom, all over your face, baby. It's an easy way to remember this acronym. I guess we could call it, right? Pushing muscles is the chest and the triceps. Pulling muscles is the muscles of the back, upper back, mid back, um, traps, lower back, the erectors also, because we are working hinge motions into this, also hamstrings. But when we say hamstrings, we're working the hamstring hinge in the deadlift position, right? Because the hamstring contracts just under the glute, the hamstring also contracts at the back of the knee. So you can do like stiff legged deadlifts and RDLs by and training your hamstring, but there's carryover into the erectors, which makes the hamstring hinge day fit very well on pull day. But there's also the hamstring exercise like the leg curl, which is the bending of the knee, with fit, which fits very well onto the leg day, which will be a quad dominant day, glute dominant day, and also hamstring curl day. So we go back to the push day. My, my push day will now be, and I say push because it's like, I push you away, push you away, right? I'm pushing you away. That is my push day. I'm working my chest this day. I'm working my tricep this day. Now, when I work chest, I the, now the chest is a very complex muscle. What does the chest do? The chest brings the upper arm across the body, right? It brings it across the body in a multitude of ways. So if I'm pressing, that's bringing the upper arm across the body, but not completely because we can actually cross all the way over the body. So the, the chest is a very complex muscle group and we can train the upper head of the chest. We can train the mid of the chest. We can train the lower chest as far as motions go. Now we can debate what the carrier over, over is to the actual muscle. There's incline presses, there's prone presses, and there's decline presses or dips. I love dips. I love floor presses. I love incline presses, but also I've been focused a lot of time on bringing my arm, this upper arm across the mid lane, mid plane of the body. Cause here's what happens. Most of the time when people bench press, they bench press and the arm stops here. Now, if you put your hand on your pec right now with me, when you press, I can feel my pec, con pec contract and then it stops right there. But now if I bring that arm across my body, I can feel the pec then continues contracting again. This is where a lot of people, they miss out. So in order for me to now fully train my pecs, I need four specific exercises to do so. Now I can, I can periodize these exercises. I can rotate them and I can maybe do three exercises but I do add body weight conditioning into all of my exercise routines because I'm an athlete first. I'm not a bodybuilder, right? I'm an athlete first. I must be able to run, jump, skip, climb, crawl, tumble, leap, bound, squeeze, pull, explode. I got to be able to do all that. And I have to be able to fit that in. So I always leave one body weight exercise as a part of every training day. Point is, I'm working with such heavy weights now, 125 pound dumbbell presses for sets of 12 on the incline bench. That's heavy. Like that's, I don't, there's, there's other people. I, I got a, a buddy who does like 150s for sets of, of 12, right? I got a, another buddy who do like the 180s for like sets of six. That's crazy strong. They're both like, you know, 280 pounds or so. I'm 214, but I digress. So. When I'm doing like, um, I don't do any barbell bench press, but like barbell incline presses, I'm doing like 275, 315, four sets on the barbell incline now. That's heavy. So the point is, I was getting then, I was training my chest, and then I would have to train my overhead presses. I was just shy. I was shy. I was so tired that my, my shoulders were suffering. They, they were becoming an afterthought where I just didn't have the mental energy or the physical energy to then push such heavy weights for that muscle group, which made sense to train push muscles and then train 
press muscles and press because we, we overhead press, right? We don't overhead push, overhead press, it fits well. Back is a very complex muscle group also. When we're training the back, my goodness, we have to train the lats that we're all familiar with. We have to train the terrace minor. We have to train the terrace major. We have to train the infrasporatus. We have to train the rhomboids. We have to train the trapezius muscles. We have to train the erectors. There's so many different muscles in a back to build a proper back. This is a lot. So what do we have to do when we're training our back? We have to do a rowing motion. We have to do a low rowing motion. We have to do a mid grip rowing motion. And we have to do a high grip rowing motion to really get that upper mid back. We have to do some form of a pull down, at least one form, but there's a narrow low pull down, which works extremely well to hit that mid back, low mid back, or you can go a wide pull down or a chin up or a pull up also. There's so many different grips and variations. There's like eight different types of exercises at least to fully train a complete back. I'm killing myself with 150 pound bent over dumbbell rows for sets of 12 to 15. I, oh, I'm, I'm you know, stacking most of the machines in the gym. I say this because it's like, man, that's, it's, it's hard work. Like physically it's fatiguing to do all this, right? It's, it's physically very fatiguing to do all this, to hit all these muscles. I'm done doing like RDLs with like 315 with like, you know, perfect form, really controlling descent on the way down. I hit the, the glued ham machine. If you've ever seen that, you kind of hook in, you flap down and you go all the way up. So I'm doing those for like sets of 15 to 20, holding a 25 pound plate on my chest. I say this because the amount of workload that I've now over the last three months slowly but surely built myself into, which is amazing, has taken its toll. So I'm at the phase now, and I wanted to just full disclosure, I wanted to share this with you, give you some exercise thoughts. And I'll tie this up at the end and give you like, hey, if you want to try push, pull, press legs, give it a try. Now, likely the program is set up such that I might not, I don't like taking days off. I don't like taking days off at all. Very rarely do I want to, I, I don't take days off per se, but I like to train with resistance every day. And, and if you can change the, the, the demand, the stimuli, you can train with resistance every day. If your sleep is right, if your stress management is right. And if your nutrition is right, and mine is, I'm getting nine hours a night, every single night, I go to bed at nine 15 at night. That's the way my house is set up. That's the way we live our lives. I wake up typically between five and six o'clock in the morning. I wake up, I hydrate a little caffeine. I go for my first workout of the day, which is a 30 minute outdoor walk. I come home, I clean up, I have my first meal. I answer some emails. The kids wake up. Um, I play with the kids completely present with them. I eat again with them. And now a little bit later after that, I'm hitting second workout of the day, which I'll be showing here on this channel, Cardio Talk which is I hit my intervals on the elliptical, which I have one in my house. Then I eat again after that. I do a couple more things around the house. And then I move on to my day. I typically come to the studio and I start working here. I have client consultations and phone calls and all that other great stuff, which is awesome. And then I keep clipping through the day. Today, then I went to the banya, right? I got the hot, cold contrast in. Ate on the way there, did my hot, cold contrast, had a, a Dolce Way uh, smoothie uh, mixed in after that, came home, and then just ate an amazing salad with certified Piedmontese grass-fed, grass-finished meatballs that Brandy makes, which are awesome with, with no breading. What is she using? I think she uses like a little mozzarella, fresh mozzarella to keep it together. I'm going like really long. I'm slightly off topic here. I apologize. I'm just walking you through my day. And then now here I'm shooting this video for you. When I'm done this video, then I'm going to train. Today actually becomes press day. It's going to be the first day of my pressing day. I am super excited to start today with standing overhead military presses. I think I will PR personal record on my standing overhead military presses today. How about that? Where, when I got to my standing overhead military presses, I was shot from all the heavy presses, the 125s on the sets of 12 and the dumbbell incline, 
presses, in the um, uh, the, the, the weighted dip, you know, 45 pound, you know, weight hanging between my legs, you know, weight belt wise and, and just bagging out sets of 12 to 15 like that, man, that's an ass kicker. Um, I've been doing these high incline medium grip, um, presses, which is kind of like a, a, a chest tricep hybrid, really good exercise, um, to, to finish that. So by the time I was getting to my shoulders, Man, my shoulders are already shot. Now I can hit all three heads, the anterior, lateral, and posterior head of the deltoid. I can hit all of those without that fatigue. But what I'm also doing, let me clean this up for you. I don't want to get this video too long. It's probably already too long. Sorry, guys. I'm, it's like I just wanted to share this with you. Push day will be now chest and triceps. Pull day will be back, hamstrings and erectors, but hamstrings in the, the deadlift, right? Lengthening, extending hamstrings. So hinge hamstrings, I call them. Pressing will be all three heads of the deltoids and the bicep because I'm shot. Also, when I'm done my, my back day going the last few months, progressively worse and worse, I don't, I'm like, I'm done. When I, I'm done training my back, my arms are fried. My forearms are pumped. I try not to wear straps as much as possible. So I have really good grip strength. My arms are shot. I, I can't really do any specific specialized bicep work that I want to do because I've already crushed them with so many hard, heavy sets from all the back work, which is good, but I can't really give any specificity. Now I can put my biceps today on my press day, which the head of the bicep, actually, the bicep, two heads, the bicep actually feeds into that deltoid capsule. So there will be a lot of blood in that area, general area anyway. So it's just a synergistic muscle group um, to the, the deltoid. And then legs will be quads, glutes, calves, and hamstring curls, right? It's a really nice fix. I trade ad, train abduction and adduction also, that's a part of it, the way I set up. I do a lot of belt squats um, and focus more on um, adduction and abduction, though just the way I kind of position my legs and the way I, I, I slowly descend and squeeze on the way up. When I do belt squats, they're more, they're, it's not really a quad dominant exercise for me. Um, that's a whole nother video probably, by the way. So what do you guys think? Push pull, press legs. This is the new hot shit, my friends. This is a new thing. Now, what I will say, if you're just getting into this, you probably want to run push, pull legs for a little while. You want to build up the volume, build up the intensity, build up the mechanics. And then this is an upgrade, right? This is an upgrade, push, pull, press legs. This is an upgrade now for me. And let's see how this happens. So I'm going to start running this concurrently. I'm just going to probably go, you know, eight, nine, 10 days in a row before I need a day off. And really, I don't know that I will need a day off on this cycle. Um, and it actually gives me what I was doing. I was getting a little fatigued sometimes because of I was running push, pull legs, push, pull legs. And sometimes that lower back was a little shot from all the, the pull work, the hinge work, the bent over rows and things like that. So when I got to legs, I'd feel like, oh, man, my lower back's just still a little tweaked out from the heavy pull work, hinge work. And then every so often I would throw in a reactive, reactive rest day before legs to give that area an extra day off. And I do something gentle. I do some like sled drag, some farmer's walks. I do some bit mobility work or, you know, I go for like, uh, I go walk on the sand in the beach or something like that. Now I don't have to worry about that anymore. I can really focus on hitting this resistance training. Anyway, what do you guys think about this? Push, pull, press, legs, boom, the new hot shit. It's, it's time to get crazy, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Summer is coming now, April 1st. This is the start date. The start date of summer shredding is right now. Everything until this point, that was preamble. That was just making out. Now it is time to get down and dirty between the sheets and get focused to get your program locked in, get your nutrition locked in. Nutrition is everything. All the exercise is secondary to the nutrition. If you don't have the nutrition in place, guess what? 
You can't exercise that hard because you have no energy and you can't recover from the exercise because you have no raw materials to repair the damage done during exercise. Nutrition is the most important. If you are interested, click the link below, learn more about the three weeks to shredded program. That is the exact program I will be following for the next six weeks. 42 days of three weeks to shredded, repeating the program twice. That is all at thedolcediet.com. And new members who sign up will actually be invited to join me in what we, I just started a shredding group. So that's going to be fun where we're all going to be shredding together, joining up in the process together, daily personal text messages from me, updates and things like that. And we're going to host a few like live chats and maybe even do a meetup. Uh, depending on where I got a couple travel dates coming up around the country. Um, and then if you guys are here in New Jersey, you might want to think about coming to some of these meetups. I'm, I'm starting to schedule those soon, by the way, now that the world is open. And I think we're legally, legally allowed to actually uh, get a workout together. But anyway, I appreciate you guys subscribe to the channel if you have, have not yet. Why would you not? Subscribe to this awesome channel dedicated to bringing you the most honest, actionable, and evidence-based information to dramatically improve your life. Until next time, boom!